with your Gen Con champion, Mr. Kevin Allen. Welcome to the channel, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. So, uh, you recently had quite the run. Um, was this your first tournament win? Uh, it was, yes. Um, so, I tend to be very contrarian in my deck building. I, in almost any uh, card game I play of this sort, I tend to go against the meta just for the sake of going against the meta. And a lot of times that lands me in the bottom third in a really rough day. And this time I just found something that no one expected and I loved playing it and it worked and everything came together for me perfectly. Well, congrats on your victory. Thanks. But I will say that tr trading card games need guys like you. Because if it wasn't for guys like you, then everyone would be playing the same four deck archetypes, and that is all you would see. And and I agree with that. And I, I will always tend to play something that I find interesting, that um, I enjoy, as opposed to, you know, and as opposed to just the power decks. And whether that means theme-wise, um, you know, playing the characters or the faction that I like or the play style that I like. You know, and I fully appreciate that, that cards are not exactly a, a unique archetype within um, Transformers right now. They're, they've always been a pretty solid one. You know, I, I think the the four wide pushes it an extra step. It, it creates a lot of interesting decision points, a lot of um, things to keep track of, um, and that just makes it that much more challenging and interesting for me. And like I said, I got lucky this time out, and it worked really well. So for those who haven't already seen the deck list put out by people, what exactly did you run? Give us a little brief rundown. Okay, so uh, basically it was a four wide, uh, it's generally called, been called a four wide cars, though uh, I do use uh, three cars plus RC. Um, so the characters in it are Cliff Jumper, uh, the starter box Red Alert, um, Prowl from uh, Wave 1, and then RC. Um, the deck itself is uh, pretty much a standard cars aggro deck, um, includes a couple of options for untapping. Uh, the cars in um, turbo boosters and start your engine um, and then a lot of, of kind of the standard aggro stuff supercharges reckless charges um, uh, grenade launchers um, power punch that sort of thing a um, couple of interesting tricks uh, one of the things that I got a lot of questions on over the weekend when people saw it I actually run heat of battle in my uh, main deck, which is uh, a card that gives bold three and tough three to all characters until the end of the turn. Um, I kind of made a meta call that we'd see more aggro, and it's a really great in an aggro on aggro matchup. And even if I end up against something blue, RC kind of laughs at tough, and so it becomes an extra supercharge to to throw on RC. And uh, that one won me more than one game. Um, but the basic flow of the, the, the deck is to, you know, take your attacks, hopefully untap to protect your characters, um, and lead into a, a big wheel turn with uh, two or even three extra attacks uh, when you can really clean things up. Hmm. How did you deal with the, uh, well, I guess first off, what kind of matchups did you run, run into over the course of the day? So uh, um, during the qualifiers, um, I uh, did six rounds. I actually went four and two in the qualifiers. Um, I lost one to an Insecticons, which uh, the deck actually has a very good matchup against Insecticons, but it was one of those where, you know, the cards just never showed up and he got what he needed and, and played it uh, okay. And, you know, um, it just didn't go well. Um, the other one I, I lost was to uh, Vince from Vector Sigma um, running his Blaster deck, which uh, was surprisingly terrifying and managed to, to hand present almost a wide as front as I did uh, and proved to be be problematic for me. Um, I played a couple of Shockwave decks that I handled without too much trouble. Um, they uh, tried to use Acid Storm, but the, the width, you know, it, it, Acid Storm did what he does in shutting down my bold and really limited my damage output, but I was wide enough to outlast, and then when it got to the, the wheel turn, I was able to kill Acid Storm at that point, and, you know, all bets were off, and uh, it turned into a really bad day for Shockwave after that. Um, I didn't face much in the way of um, 
of Optimus Prime, the, the Battlefield Legend uh, classic, was surprisingly absent. Um, I actually, my very first round was against Joe from Wreck and Rule, um, playing his Anticipation Cars deck, which uh, caught me completely off guard, um, but uh, showed me kind of most of his tricks in, in the first game, which I lost, and I came back for the other two from there. Um, so that was in the qualifiers. Moving into the final, it was very, very heavily aggro. Um, I played Vince's deck again and managed to, Vince and his deck again, um, and managed to sneak out the win against Blaster this time. Um, I also played a, uh, let's hear, what was it? General Optimus, somebody, and Detour. I don't even remember who the third character was. Um, and then I also played the Optimus Barrage, um, uh, fire drive deck that the the vector sigma guys were running and then the the semifinals and finals were on stream it was insecticons and then the the wheel jack cliff jumper car deck so uh the finals were very heavily dominated by aggro i played uh it was against another orange deck all five rounds um but i will say to the credit of the community i had no repeats um i know there were some duplicate decks there but uh, I played a completely different deck in every single round I played, which was really great and a whole lot of fun. So uh, the meta is pretty diverse right now, then, you could say. Um, I, I think so. And I think part of that is that, that people are still figuring out what works um, out of a set and, and what doesn't. Um, but, you know, I also think that to the community's credit, there is a certain level of not just going for what works or, or maybe people are reacting well to what they know works and that's pushing it down. You know, Insecticons are kind of the gold standard example there, right? It's it, it's an obviously strong deck, um, but it's generally regarded as one with a pretty low skill cap. And so whether whether players at, at that top 32 are, are choosing to move away from it or are uh, able to meta against it, which is what I feel like I did in the, the, uh, the semifinals. You know, I knew I was going to face them. I felt like I was well prepared for it. Um, or, you know, whether they're just trying something new to, to deal with it so it's not all insects all the time, we're seeing a lot of diversity. Um, and that, that's good, at least as far as the decks. I, I will say I feel like we are, are very trapped in an orange meta at this point. <clears throat> um, part of that, I think, is the game's inherent skew towards orange. I mean, the, you know, the developers have said they want it to be an aggressive game. They don't want games to turn into, you know, drag out 45 minutes for a game um, blue on blue slugfests, which is fine. Um, but I, I do feel like it's pushed a little too hard the other direction. I think between the time limits and the tiebreaker, especially uh, favoring orange as much as it does, um, you know, I, I tend to prefer playing blue decks. I prefer a defensive or, or control style in most games I play. But, you know, especially looking at the tiebreaker, um, it just didn't seem like the way to go and and i did see uh we had more than one match in the 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 cut on saturday that went to time i saw one that was i don't even know who the players were but there was an aerial bots versus uh insecticons and you know i went to time before the end of the second game they flipped for oranges and there you go um and i think i actually that was actually blaine who i played in the the semifinals um after that one so i, I feel like I, i've heard some rumors and some suggestions from wizards that they're going to tweak the tiebreaker a little bit that i think will open it up some um, but, you know, I also think that, that blue is just a little harder to play. Um, I, I do think it has a, a, the potential, but it's going to be a bigger challenge to get there. So for those that don't know, what exactly is the tiebreaker currently? So uh, the, the tiebreaker at the moment, if, if games go to time, um, it first counts the damage on characters in play, um, including KO'd characters. <clears throat> um, and then uh, whoever has the least damage on their characters wins um if that is tied which in a low uh damage environment you know in, in a drawn out game is perfectly feasible uh you flip cards off of your deck and whoever flips them you flip two cards off of your deck and whoever flips the most oranges wins uh and if that ties then you keep flipping um and until someone wins that and if you happen to have exactly the same number of oranges in your deck then it goes to a coin toss uh, but basically what it means is that if you're in that that really tight game where it's you know goes to to even damage and goes to to flips for the the final one um and what i believe happened in in this case with the the aerial bots insecticons and 
you know, I, I was observing this, so I'm not 100% sure. I think what happened was they went to time on the second game. That game was decided based on damage, but then they had to resolve the third game as a tiebreaker. There's obviously no play for it, so there was no damage, so it went straight to flips and it went to the orange deck. Uh, yep, okay. I can definitely see how that skews things towards orange. Yep. So, so it and and you know, like I said, it's not uh, complete. Um, again, from from Origins, we saw that blue decks did very very well going into Origins, um, but also it's interesting to to see at this point that you know we we do have a pretty tight community. Um, you see a lot of the same names, and so I'm I, I'm not entirely convinced that we have a best. Um, of anything that's really fallen out yet you know the the origins they it, it you know blue was at the top a lot but i don't know how much of that is because blue was better in that era before we hit wave three and how much was because the top players all tended to skew blue yeah now you being like a control oriented style player typically what do you think the developers could do to kind of shift it to more of an even keel um, th that's an interesting question. I, I will be honest. I, I tend to stay out of armchair game designing, um, to be honest. Uh, part of it is, it is out of an appreciation of how hard it is. You know, I, I work in the software field, and so, you know, I, I, I know when, when people have easy obvious answers to fixing bugs or what went wrong that it's probably bigger than that. And, and I kind of extend the, the same thing there. Um, I think um, if if I had to to kind of diagnose it at this point, um, it is uh, that you know you you is already a little stronger, and if if we both get our stuff, it tends to be a wash, right? You know, you've got your bowl too, I've got my tough too. It's probably going to to come out in the wash. Um, but at the end of the day, I still have to find a way to do damage in addition to surviving. Um, plus, I have to get mine before yours. If I get mine before yours, then, you know, I slow things down a little bit. It's good. If you get yours before mine, I lose the game. Um, and so there's there's a definite skew um, on that front. Um, I do think the, the new wave uh, actually helped a little bit, uh, getting some really good blue armors uh, in the form of extra padding um, that, you know, is both resilient to removal and has the green pip so you can find it is a good step in the right direction um i also uh they just um showed up with the the new steadfast keyword on the hot rod preview uh, a couple of days ago i think that's going to be a big step in the right direction as well um as well as his other ability you know something that um you know at, at some point with a blue deck you you have to either chip away um through something like pierce or you have to have that inflection point where you go okay i have survived long enough now i'm going to win the game and you know for me i play i play nemesis prime a lot with a mill deck and so you know my goal with him i have to survive that first shuffle or two to get to the point where he just starts single-handedly wrecking everything right um and so i i feel like what we see with hot rod is a character that will survive a little better out of the gate because of steadfast and really gives you a very strong ability once uh you you hit that reshuffle as your inflection point that you know what that's a pretty accurate diagnosis i'm not gonna lie and uh yeah man does hot rod look good eh yeah oh i'm, I'm pretty excited for him yeah it's about time we got to see hot rod yep so uh we've heard about your matches We've talked about you, uh, you being a control-oriented player. Now, what's your overall like opinion of Wave Three meta so far? Do, how far through shaping it out do you think we are? Do you think it's been fairly flushed out? Do you think it's still in its infancy? Um, I think it's still in its infancy. I, I, I will be honest. I think that in the long run, Battle Masters are going to turn out to be a trap. Um, I, I, I think they are, they're definitely an interesting style, but what I saw a lot of, um, is that especially when people use the piece of tyranny and, and end up killing themselves, if it doesn't win you the game, it probably costs you the game. Um, you know, because it effectively turns your deck into two white. And then once they do, there's so many ways to, to see it removed. 
Um, and, you know, a lot of them are, are, you're killing your own character. You have a character who doesn't do much until they get killed. And then you get, you know, admittedly a really good, solid, strong weapon, but it's effectively a plus two or three attack. And then he gets taken out by enforcement batons. So I, I don't know. I, I'm, I know that will be a controversial opinion. I know that, that a lot of people are, are very heavy on them and, and I could very well be wrong and they, they hold the place. Um, but I tend to think we're going to see them fade off um, for characters that provide more of a strong value through the entire game. I would tend to agree. So that's my... I would say if Peace Through Tyranny wasn't the play right now, or if it had seen, like, rotation or something like that, I don't think Battle Masters would be as big of a deal. I find yes. Peace Through Tyranny really gives them that little extra they need. Yep. And and I I, I, I saw that a lot. And, and I would say that they give them a big extra that they need. But, you know, one of the things that I tended to do, I faced more than, than one of the Battlemaster decks. Um, and, and I know that general consensus is that it's wrong. And I went back and forth on how to handle it. Um, I would tend to play around it a lot. I wouldn't just outright kill it. I would make them have the, the piece through tyranny, and if they did, then I would would weather it, which often I could do because of the, the width of my, my deck. I think you saw that in the last game of the finals. Um, he actually had the piece through tyranny. He played it on Lionizer, um, but I was still in a position to where I lost one character for it, which I probably would have even if he hadn't done the piece through tyranny. So... Um, I, I tended to play around it, and there were a couple of games where that bit me on, and I had to weather it, and it didn't always go great. But a lot of times, they didn't have it, and the character sat there doing almost nothing. Um, and so it ended up being seven stars. And I think when you, you compare other characters that you can get out of seven stars, um, Barrage is a great classic example. Um, I you know, have put Red Alert on the map at six stars here, you know, something that, that nobody was paying any attention to before this past weekend. You know, I, I think there's a lot of value you can get out of a regular character. And I, I don't know that, that the Battle Masters are, are worth what it does to your deck after they go away. But, but we'll see. I, I think that's still going to take time. But if, if there's one thing that I think is still going to, to develop, whether I'm right or wrong about the end result, that, that's what I think is still needing to get hashed out. Now, would you say you being four wide helped you weather the Battle Masters more so than other decks? Oh, very much. Um, and, and for multiple reasons. Um, you know, the, the, there were the couple of times that I got hit with the Peace of Tyranny. Um, and, you know, if, if you just kind of assume that when they do it, even if I was going to lose two characters, that would still leave me, say, Cliff Jumper and, and RC or Prowl and RC which, you know, if I'd been throwing damage right, um, at which in, in those cases I was probably avoiding the Battle Master, um, had a good chance of closing out the game for me and, and did so more than once. Um, and in cases where, um, where I, they didn't have the Peace Through Tyranny, basically I would tend to, to softball into the, the Battle Master as, as one of my first swings, and then they have to swing with one of their big characters. And there, was, there were more than a few games when the Battle Master was the last one standing. Um, and at that point, you know, the, the game's basically over. I figured it kind of went like that, but I just wanted to hear it from the horse's mouth. Now, <laughs> one of the big debates in the community right now is around Cliff Jumper. I've been reading a lot of Cliff Jumper's bad for the game. Cliff Jumper makes the game pay to win, okay. which I personally, in a collectible card game scenario, I hate hearing that kind of stuff because you're always going to have cards that cost a good chunk of money that are good. Yes. So I don't believe in such thing as pay to win in a collectible card game environment. Do you have an opinion on this being a guy that ran Cliff Jumper? Um, so I, I do, and, and I've got a, a couple. Um, you know, it, first thing I will, will qualify on um, is that I, I started into this game um, 
last Gen Con. Um, I, I'll, I'll give a brief shout out to Drew uh, Nolasco for running demos last year. And I, I sat through that demo because they were giving away common characters and I wanted to come back with the variety. I, I went through that demo so so many times that Drew knew me by, by sight just because I was trying to collect different characters that were all commons in wave one. So, you know, my cliff jumpers came straight out of the, the packs at, at Gen Con. So, you know, I did not pay $400 for, for a cliff jumper to get this. Um, the, the second thing that, that I will add um, is that I, I and, and I've, I put this up on the Facebook group before, I, I'm always careful about that line of what's good or what's bad. Because there's a lot of people who might want to play this game and get into this game, but can't afford the 30 bucks for a single card for say Battlefield Legend. But you know, you, you rarely hear people declare it as Battlefield Legend is out there, or, or when Nemesis was rolling it at 70 bucks, it wasn't pay to win because Nemesis was 70. I think that that there is a lot of, of very understandable angst over not being able to, to have the cards you want or not being able to have access to everything. Um, and, and that said, Cliff Jumper is not the only way to, to win in the game. Uh, you know, we, we had a good showing this time, but, you know, just like Blue at Origins, a lot of it was just sort of a coincidental convergence. Um, Cliff Jumper enables a couple of very solid deck designs, but he does not enable as many as, say, Battlefield Legend does, or even Grimlock does. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, the, the fact that I did well this weekend was, again, that I just kind of found something the meta hadn't been anticipated. I, I will tell you, there are solid weaknesses to to this deck grimlock gives me fits but i never saw one of them um you know when when you have a wide deck grimlock is one of the solid answers for it so i i think i i think that a lot of people who are jumping on the the issue with with cliff jumper i, I mean i i understand the the angst but i think that they are letting that um everything and the the dislike of exclusives um color their view of what cliff jumper is really doing um to the metagame and and whether or not he is really all that powerful to to beat um in in a weird way i think they almost want him to be so powerful and broken because it proves them right on disliking the exclusives that's uh you know what a really fair assessment so when you win Gen Con, you get a fancy trophy, yep. which apparently someone in the airport dropped. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah. So um, when Drew gave me the trophy that night, he, he warned me that um, it would look weird going through the airport security scanners. Um, I decided to carry it on anyway, um, mainly because uh, with all of the other games I had bought at Gen Con, it put my bag over to weight limit because um, the thing weighs a ton. It is a very, very heavy trophy. Um, and also, honestly, I figured it would be safer in my hands than, than you know, the, the airline's baggage handlers. So uh, it did indeed show up weird. They had to check it. They, they were doing the... The, the typical bomb swab, whatever. I mean, it's a glass, solid, clear glass thing. I don't know what they thought was in there, but whatever, they're doing their jobs, that's fine. The guy starts to put it back in the box, lifts it up to put it in, and just in slow motion almost, I watch it topple out as the lid comes off, it hits the metal desk and two of the corners break. Um, and, and I just, you know, I, I was running on about three hours of sleep. Actually, you know, I, I also was feeling awful. Uh, you know, it's not uncommon to, to pick up a flavor, some flavor of Concrud um, with 70,000 other people. This year, I managed to catch a case of pink eye coming back. Uh, so, you know, I, I was feeling miserable and running on about three hours of sleep and they dropped. And, you know, they were appropriately apologetic, but, you know, it's one of a kind thing. There's, there's nothing. And, so I got home and I, I pinged Drew and told him what happened. And I was just like, you know, I will probably be doing this claim. I will send you some, the, whatever it is. Is there any way you guys can make me a replacement? And he, he took a couple days to, to get back and said, yep, we've got it. There's a new one on the way. Don't worry about it. Um, we're taking care of it for you. And um, honestly, it was just one of the, the coolest things I've 
I have seen a game company do. There, there was no reason for it to be their problem. Um, it was totally out of their hands. They had no no involvement in it, and they stepped up to to help me out and take care of it. And and huge huge props to that team and their willingness to do that. Yeah, that really really speaks to the development team and the the running of the game. Like if you're willing to do that for one of your players, that's huge. And you obviously want your game to grow. Yep, and I agree. And I, you know, I, I've actually talked to Drew, like I said, I, I talked to him um, at Gen Con last year and then at PAX last year um, uh, briefly. And then again, um, you know, this time obviously, but um, you know, he, he has always been open and willing to discuss things um, about where the game is, where things are going, you know, within some reason, their their plans and how they view it, which is something that, that I think a lot of um, companies underappreciate, even just having that insight of, you know, okay, this is the way they're thinking about it. And, you know, last year we talked about it and it was organized play. And, you know, he, he mentioned their desire to establish the game at all of the different levels of play, you know, from kids and very casual to competitive and then start rolling in the OP. And we've, we've seen the, the end result of that now with a, a game that's healthy all the way from top to bottom. So what, uh, do you have any future plans? Uh, any big tournaments coming up for you? Uh, well, I, I am going to uh, be at the, the PAX Unplugged um, Invitational. Um, I actually went to PAX last year and wasn't planning on going again this year, uh, but I told my wife going that, you know, if, if I make the, the cut on the day um, that I would qualify for the Invitational and, and that I would probably like to look at going. And, you know, and then this happens, and I, I will be honest, I am about as stunned as anyone but you know now that i i am tagged as the gen con champion i kind of feel an obligation to to be there so uh we as have worked it should. out i will will be there and i look forward to seeing everyone at, at pax in december um so will wave four be i can't remember off the top of my head yes. will wave four be legal for pax yep I, I believe it's supposed to hit about a month before uh uh, the event, which is pretty close to what we had for Wave 3 for this one. So, again, it'll be another meta in its infancy. So, how do you feel about that, the meta being fairly new going into a major tournament? Um, I actually like it. I, I will be honest. I, I am mostly a casual player. I, I play for fun. Um, like I said at the beginning, I would always rather play what I like than than what happens to be strong with the meta. Um, and and I, I feel like in a way it, it almost gets to that challenge of being a draft or limited environment where you have to to learn and adapt quickly and, and make your own evaluations. Um, but it, it hadn't necessarily got that random factor that goes into a draft, right? Um, and, and, you know, like, like Heat of Battle is, is my good example here. You know, I, I saw a value in Heat of Battle that I, I don't think many other people did, and it did some serious work for me over the weekend. And so, you know, opportunities like that to, to find your own way, I think, excel in that period before, um, you know, the, the, the meta has a chance to take hold. Um, and, you know, in a way, I think it's, it's a lot easier to to do your own thing. And, you know, even if you can find your own value, that can be hard to do when you have, you know, the entirety of the Internet telling you that that card X is awful and that, you know, card Y is unbeatable. And, you know, so that that chaos period after a, a new set comes out where everybody is trying to to find their way. I actually think is a really interesting environment to have that kind of an event in. And, and I think it makes it a lot more exciting. Yeah, I'm a big fan of new metas going into tournaments. It really speaks to people as deck builders and speaks to their research they've put into the new set going into it. They don't wait for people to flush it out for them. Right. Which I really respect. So we have a couple viewer questions. Um, sure. so you didn't run into a Metroplex in Gen Con. Correct. Okay. What is your opinion on Metroplex in the meta? Do you um, think he has his place? I, I think he does. I, I, I think he is, um, 
very solid character. I don't know that he is is top tier, um, but I think he is good. And he is one that has answers to a lot of different decks. Um, I'll be honest, Metroplex would give me fits. Um, if if I had a good solid Metroplex that could, you know, let me have one, you know, my, my deck relies on getting anywhere from, you know, four to seven attacks per untapped cycle, right? You know, if, if I've got a Metroplex that's turning that into one, I am in deep trouble. Um, and so I, I think he has good answers to, to certain things. Um, in the the meta i think a lot of people were scared off of him because some of the cards in in wave three that that can kind of screw with him um i think dampening field and uh gyro blaster are both uh ones we haven't seen develop a lot but would really really mess with with metroplex um so i i don't know i i will say that that i i feel like he, he is someone who can compete a lot of, against a lot of different decks but has some weaknesses so I, I don't know that I would expect to see him win at PAX Unplugged or any of the major, but, you know, he, he can play and he can compete. So another question we got, and I'm unsure about this. Someone asked if, I'm just bringing it up, can we have an Electrotron promo card made? Now, Oh, Ectotron? Yeah. yeah Ectotron, Okay, I'm correct. very much the wrong... I'm very much the wrong one to ask about that, um, uh, but yeah, Ectotron is the uh, is the Ghostbusters Transformers crossover toy. Ah. Um, I, I suspect licensing will prevent that from happening, but I am very much the wrong one to ask. Gotcha. I thought that question was angled towards like uh, I play other games where people win an event like you did and they get to help design a certain card or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't sure, sure if so that was a Gen Con thing. From Gen Con, it will be at PAX. So uh, assuming I can repeat, um, we'll see. Although I have to say, I I think it's somewhat criminal that we don't have a card for Braun yet. So if I do win, uh, you heard it here, Braun is probably the character I'm going to angle for. I like it. So do you have uh, any other comments on the current meta that you would like to share? Any opinions? <laughs> um, I, I don't. Uh, well, and maybe I, I say I don't, and then I'm, I I start into one. Um, you know, my my biggest thing. I do hope blue um, comes up. I I um I think there's a lot of pressure right now, both for orange and both against Decepticons. I I think press the advantage makes it really tough to run any kind of defensive Decepticon deck, which um you know at that point narrows your options for blue even more. Um, so I'm hoping we see some some things out of Wave 4 that kind of even up that imbalance a little bit. Um, but also, uh, you know, one of the things I, I will parrot a little bit off of Drew um, that, you know, I heard him say in, in an interview with Wreck and Rule, um, I, I feel like one of the big areas that people haven't explored yet is secret actions. Um, you know, I, as an example, you know, I, I had some major plays with Bolster um, because I was willing to drop that one in, um, and that won me matches, hands down. Um, and so, and I, I think there's a lot of value in them. You know, another example, you know, like I'm always willing to slide in about three off-color cards, um, and at least in whatever I do, you know, in this deck, start your engine sort of takes that spot. But, you know, I, I'm considering infiltrate in orange decks. You know, if you manage to catch someone and turn off a, you know, even in a counter aggro matchup, if I turn off your piece to tyranny or your supercharge or your reckless charge um, for a turn, that is a massive, massive damage shift. And, you know, I, I think that wins games. Um, you know, Take Cover is one that, uh, I won't be honest, I did not even realize it would shut down Grimlock until uh, someone asked the question on one of the Facebook groups. And uh, all of a sudden, my eyes have gotten really wide at that potential. So I, I think secret actions are something that are very hard to play. Um, I will say, you know, even with the ones I had, trying to make sure that I timed it to where it was coming into a character, um, that I would be able to control and know what happens, um, you know, it was was hard. And and that's, you know, with something like, again, like a bolster where it's always going to work out well for me. You know, something like infiltrate or take cover, 
you know, those things are much, much harder to, to make practical use of. But I think there's going to be a really high skill cap on that in being able to read the game state to know when your opponent is going to throw something like that to make it worth uh, playing one of those secret actions to get a counter. So I, I think that's the the big area that's going to develop in the next couple of months. And I'm very curious to see what comes out of, of wave four in that vein and what we see going into packs. Right on. So I have one more question for you and then we'll let you go because I really appreciate your time. No problem. Happy to be here. I really enjoy it. Pre-wave four, what are, what are a couple bots you think people are sleeping on? Because I hear a lot oh. of Battlefield Legend, a lot of Insecticon, and a lot of Cliff Jumper. Right. Um... Boy, that's an interesting question. That, that's one of the, 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 the hassles of, you know, I, I feel like I've already answered this. I mean, Red Alert was was the thing. Actually, I'll share another brief story from Gen Con. Um, you know, so uh, I got a lot of sideways looks for running the starter box Red Alert. Um, a lot of people were, were like, wait, you're you're running that. And, uh, you know, or, or wait, I thought that was the way three Red Alert. That's the starter. But the, the counter to that is Matt Smith, the, the designer, was there. And every time he walked by, he kind of pointed. He's like, yeah, red alert. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you see it. So, you know, it, it's I, I, I kind of feel like I've already found some of those. Um, and and I'm, I'm double or nothing, nothing mean here. Um, I, I will say I think General Megatron um, has a lot of potential. He, he, uh, he is a scary, scary guy. Once he gets rolling, he can turn out and a astonishing amount of direct damage um if he can get over the things we've already talked about as far as blue and defensive um decept context if there's something in in wave four that helps that especially um or maybe there's just still still that combo that that people are are looking for to to really make work um with him so uh he's probably the biggest one um the, the other one that that i i this is less of a I think people are sleeping on than I'm curious to see. I, I think Captain Ironhide is someone with some interesting potential that a very high skilled player can can really exploit. Um, you know, being able to to leverage those extra weapon plays, um, to bounce them back and forth, um, it has a lot of potential. And and I don't know that anyone's sleeping on it. I think Vince uh, put that idea to bed. But Blaster is going to be a real thing. Um, he is a very very solid character, and anyone who who disregards him because he's coming out of that sort of pseudo starter set um, is making a very big mistake. He's going to be very competitive. Perfect. And I know I said that was the last question, but we had a viewer sneak in one more ah, question on. for you. He, he's a new player and he wants to know what's a good orange deck for him to build being so new? Oh, I, I, I almost feel bad suggesting it, but Insecticons. Um, they, they are a very, very solid competitive aggro deck. Um, they are, the cards are easy to get. Uh, Scrapnel is the only um, rare card in the mix. Um, you know, you, you've got your usual hard to come by piece of tyrannies if you run those. Um, uh, Swarm is the other one, but it's a fairly cheap deck to to put together and um, is very very solid. Um, you know, and 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 honestly, it's still competitive. Again, you know, we we had an Insecticons uh, in the the top four, and it's you know when you have a deck that is in that range that everyone can know will be there, everyone will test against, everyone will meta against and you still manage to have someone carry it to the top four, it's a very, very solid deck. Um, and, and it's a great place for, for new players to start. Obviously, I hope everyone will will move past it and not just live in the, the uh, Insecticon range. Um, but if you're looking for some place to start, either that or, or look for some of the Hot Wheels profiles. If you prefer cars, then, then the three wide cars with Wheeljack um, can do some really fun shenanigans uh, as well. And so anything in that vein um, is a really good place to start for an aggro as well. If you some, like something a little more tricky than Insecticons. He says Insecticons it is, and thank you. And Very well. I would like to thank you for coming on, Kevin. You, no problem. Thank you for having me. It's been great talking with you. Yeah, you are a fascinating man, and I hope to get you back in the future. I hope everyone enjoyed listening today, and we'll talk to you all next time.